Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Gutterwise Marketing Podcast. Super excited to have you with us today. We're doing this series called the Gutter Success Series, where we're interviewing highly successful gutter contractors from around the country, figuring out what they're doing to keep their trucks running and business booming. Today, I'm really happy to be joined by Robert Word of Holy City Gutter Works. Robert, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. It's a good Monday that we're recording on. Nice weather outside, you know, not too bad. <laughs> no, I can't complain. Uh, it actually is nice and sunny here too. And it's been, it rained for the last week. So there we go. Business yeah. is coming in then. <laughs> yes, that's right. Sound of money, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, let's just dive in. Um, for those that might not be familiar with you, you can tell us a little bit about your current business and uh, where you guys are located at, kind of what you're doing right now. Great. So, um, Holy City Gutter Works is in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, we have been open since 2017. Um, we were kind of the birth of, um, I started it out of my garage after, after working for another, um, gutter protection contractor for a while. Um, and it has grown at this point. So, uh, we are on pace this year to do, we're shooting for 2.3. We're more on pace for 2.1 um, million. We do a lot of restoration copper work, a lot of custom copper work, um, half round case style, um, aluminum, you know, basically we only do gutters. So it's anything that has to do with gutters. So commercial gutters, gutter protection, um, you name it, that's what we do. Awesome. That sounds great. And uh, so you have a very unique story that I'd love for you to share today. Can you explain a little bit about how you came up and and your profession that you've been in in the past and then uh, kind of how you got started into the trades and what led to you getting into the gutter industry? Yeah, so um, <laughs> my story is 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 long and strange and it's it's you know it's a winding road, but I was a professional athlete. Um, I was drafted by the Marlins in the 2002 um, uh, minor league player draft. Played baseball at University of Virginia, so um, uh, UVA is close to my heart. Um, played several years of minor league ball. Um, got out of that, actually wound up becoming a touring musician for five years. Um, and then wound up having to become an adult um, and get a job that stayed closer to home. I had uh, a couple children, had a family that I wanted to support. Um, so I actually started initially flipping homes um, in Virginia. And I moved to South Carolina. I moved to Charleston with my wife. And I didn't really know any subcontractors. didn't really know anything that would have kept, you know, flipping a house business. There, that's a relationship-based business. And I didn't, I didn't know anything. That the houses down here were more expensive. The whole thing was a little bit scary. Um, so I got in, uh, working with like a larger, um, gutter protection company. And I, I think I was I ultimately left working for the large gutter protection company because I was a little frustrated with how much control I had over the quality and the end unit. And, um, I just, you know, I, I was frustrated and I thought I could do it better. So I left and tried to do it better. <laughs> That makes sense. And that's that's kind of when you transitioned into Holy City Gutter Works then in 2020, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. Nice. So when did you start in the larger gutter protection space? Uh, just a year before that. So 2016. I worked there for like a year and three months. So I started there in 2016 and then left about a year and three months later. Um, I had started the LLC for Holy City Gutter Works in January um, but it took me until about March before, um, it's funny. My, my wife was nine months pregnant with our third child and all of our insurance was through this larger company. And I just came home one day and was like, yeah, I, I, I quit my job today. Um, so my wife and I are, uh, we're familiar with the disc profile. She and I are very like opposite ends of the disc profile. Um, she's no risk and I'm like a hundred percent risk. So, um, I stepped off that bridge and, and, um, I told her I was a cat. I'd land on my feet and here I am, you know, seven years later, still a gutter guy. 
Yeah. Awesome. So let's dive into the first couple of years of Holy City Gutter Works. Um, what did you do to get jump started? It's a really tough industry. I'm not too familiar with the Charleston market myself. So maybe point out a couple of challenges that you guys face in that market specifically. What did you do to kind of get up and running? Well, I think the first challenge uh, with with any contractor is clientele. Um, I was fortunate that I, you know, I lived in a in a fairly close knit neighborhood. Um, I started doing, I did some work for a neighbor, and initially, like the the first the first round that kept me busy for like my first two months in business was next door, um, like the the neighborhood platform next door. My neighbor, I did some work for her. She posted on next door. <clears throat> and so um, for the first, you know, two months, three months, next door kept me full. But I mean, it was just me. So um, small side tidbit story is I had never driven a gutter screw the day that I started Holy City Gutter Works. I'd literally, I, I hadn't even turned my gutter machine on before when I started it. I know that sounds nuts, um, but I'm also one that's like, you know what? Uh, the only thing that gets in the way of figuring something out is believing that you can't do it. I knew I could do it. I just had to figure out how to do it. Um, so I was a little slow for like my first three months. I didn't know what I was doing. I was making stuff up on the fly. Um, I knew the only thing that I knew is it may take me longer than most people, but very few people will do a better job than me. Um, and, and as I did that, I researched and, and, I learned as much as I could about the gutter industry so that I could be the best gutter installer I could be. Um, obviously, uh, owning your own gutter business is, you know, it's multi-pronged. There's the marketing side of it. There's the contractor side of it. There's the personnel side of it. Um, you know, so between the operations, the production and, and the marketing and sales side, when you first start, you're everything. Um, and it's not an easy role to be in because, you may have to install all day and then run leads in the afternoon. Um, so I did that for the first three months. Um, and honestly, the kickstart for Holy City Gutter Works becoming more of a contracting business than just me figuring it out was um, I went on vacation with my family for a week. I just signed the lease to a warehouse. We hadn't even moved our we hadn't moved anything into this warehouse yet. Mind you, at the time, I was 100% of the sales team and 50% of the install team. It was me and one other guy, and I was doing everything else. Um, I blew my patellar tendon out on my right leg, which meant I couldn't drive. So, you know, that's your that's 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 the gas pedal foot. Um, so I couldn't drive. I couldn't climb a ladder. Um, and if anybody's familiar with the patellar tendon rupture, it is like a nine to 12 month rehab process. Um, I had to Uber to work. <laughs> um, so I researched chapter 11 for a day cause I just signed the warehouse lease. And um, then I called a 1099 salesperson that I knew who was familiar with the gutter industry and um, asked him if he'd run some leads for me. And I called the installer that I was working with and asked him if he knew anybody else that could help him out. His brother could help him. And that became the iteration of Holy City Gutter Works that I learned how to grow from there. Um, so, you know, what what initially was probably the largest challenge of my life wound up being the biggest blessing that ever could have happened because it forced me to learn how to, to expand and run a business overnight. Um, now, you know, the setback to that is nothing teaches you how to become a better marketer or how to run your finances better. You know, I mean, as the business grows, obviously the challenges get a whole lot more difficult, but that was step one. And then step two was, um, you know, figuring out how to get, how to get the name out to more people. And that was, you know, I think the key to that is, is putting the best professional step forward you can. Um, it's having a professional website, uh, we utilized some lead aggregators initially. So we used um, Home Advisor, which is now Angie's Leads. Um, but again, you know, there's some learning lessons there from the sales side. But um, I think, you know, one of the biggest learning lessons of this business is as it grows is, you know, marketing is the is the is the fuel that that um, 
that the, the engine runs off of. So if you do not have a decent marketing grasp, um, you're always going to be playing from behind a little bit because contractors have a tendency when they're smaller to go from project to project to project to project. You know, it's like as soon as a project is done, they spend this period of time being like, oh, I got to go get more projects. Um, and I, I tried to bridge that gap as best I could by um, putting it all together. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I like how you mentioned the the fuel of the <laughs> excuse me the fuel of the engine right mm -hmm. it's, without effective marketing it's really kind of it it bogs down the whole machine right and and you like you said that gap period between projects is really the the hitter like yeah you can have projects but if, if there's a day or if there's two days where you're not out in the field getting work done that can be a huge difference when it comes to the end of the month or the end of the year in terms of revenue because mm -hmm. you know it's 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 those little projects that help your marketing even further, get the name out, help with some word of mouth. Maybe you can get a review from that person. Maybe you can get a testimonial, things like that. So it's really important to keep those gaps as small as you can. One thing that a lot of guys don't like to do is cleanings, right? There's there's a whole industry where they do just installations or just guards and don't do cleanings at all because some of them may not be able to. Maybe it doesn't actually make sense, but a lot of yeah. guys refuse to do it for logistics reasons or they don't think the ticket is high enough. And so they'll sit for two days and wait for another installation to come through instead of getting out and getting a few cleanings done within those two days and help bridging those gaps and just getting some money in the door. It, it never makes sense to me, but <laughs> I, I like that. I like that point because a lot of guys will, will make that mistake of keeping those gaps too long. So when it comes to your marketing today what are you kind of doing now to keep the engine running what do you find being most effective um and what are some lessons you may have learned of what definitely not to do so um i think first and foremost obviously your reputation is 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 the most important thing um and for us that has always been you know i used to make the joke that we were a customer service company that fronted as a gutter business um so, you know, we, we spent a lot of time making sure we spent a lot of focused time making sure like we understand the customer life cycle and and really where the pain points of a customer life cycle is. And a lot of times that occurs in the gap of communication where it's like, you know, when you're a smaller gutter company, you can't sell a job and install it the next day. Doesn't always work that way. I mean, sometimes, you know, for us at one point uh, in the middle of COVID, we were like 12 weeks. I think my, my internet may have frozen on you, but you know, we were 12 weeks out. So if we are 12 weeks out and, um, and we're not communicating in between, that's exactly where customers go haywire. Um, it's because they think they've given you money for your deposit. And then they're like, Oh, well you just took our money and you ran off. So, um, we spent a lot of time there. And then the next round of it was, um, you know, understanding where, all of our leads are coming from where we're spending our money, having a professional website. Um, I think even for us now, so we, we rode off of reputation for so long, it carried us quite a ways, but we are now growing to the point where um, I think, first of all, we did kind of a, a little bit more of a poor job of actually putting into writing. You know, we, we didn't, we didn't ask for reviews enough. So we're improving on that process now. Um, I think that's very important. And, you know, it was an oversight between, you know, all the moving pieces in the business. It's just one of the things that we failed at initially that we're improving now. Um, but also, uh, you know, understanding what differentiates us in the market, um, you know, and having the number of poles in the water in order to, you know, I, I hate to, to, to look at customers like fish, but I, I just mean it in terms of, you know, having multiple sources, whether it's it's print marketing, whether it's your social media marketing, whether it's, uh, you know, how your website is converting, um, but also, you know, how your relationship marketing is converting. Um, you know, there it, it's a multi-pronged approach that we are actually in the process of improving now um, because, you know, we've grown to the point where we have moved past the organic stage into the generated stage. Um, which also means 
we have to improve our sales process as well um, because it's no longer, you know, for some reason, gutter guys have a tendency to be the guys who walk a house, measure it, and leave a quote on the doorstep. Um, we're not that business, you know, because we have production managers and sales managers and admins and directors of operations. Like we, we're large enough to the point now where, you know, we can't, we can't sell gutter installations for bottom dollars. We have an entire team that looks at every installation you know, to make sure that guys can go out and do it once. Um, so we've spent a lot of time and money on the infrastructure of, of being really good at what we do, but it costs some money for us to maintain that. So, you know, we, we're not the bottom, we're not the cheapest gutter installation company anymore. And a big piece of that is we have, you know, the sales team has to know how to sell a value because price is everything in the absence of value. Um, and, you know, we learn that lesson easily and, in, in you know, the difficult way and the easy way um, every day. So, I mean, that's kind of the evolution of a business is, you know, at some point, if you want to grow beyond, you know, project to project, I mean, these days, you know, we're, we're four to six weeks out on most projects, but, you know, guys are finished, you know, my crews are finishing four to six jobs a day sometimes. Sometimes we're, you know, on one job for two weeks if it's a really big one. So, um, you know, the, your, your processes in the business has to evolve to keep track of that as well. Yeah, really two, two really good points I think you mentioned there. One is kind of that omnipresence, making sure that you're showing up in a lot of different places, not just one or two, making sure that you are doing the organic, showing up on organic Google, doing some paid advertising, like what you said you're getting into now, getting more of that Facebook, Google PVC leads coming in, social media, word of mouth, and then also in the community as well, making sure that you're out there, you know, sponsoring the local sports teams or, or just being present in the community. I think that's huge. I think a lot of people miss that. They think, oh, well, we're running Google ads and we're doing very well, but when you want to get to that next level and like you said, evolve your processes and get from just job to job and be booked out, you need to be kind of everywhere. And cause that, that increases, helps, helps increase your reputation. Um, you know, gets people to talk about you, get people to know you and really just elevates the business in general. And then the second piece is you mentioned a lot of different people that you have in place as well. Salespeople that know how to communicate value. Like you had said, project managers that can keep track of these projects and installers that really know what they're doing. How have you been able to recruit this great talent that you have put into place in the gutter business? Where do you find them and how do you making, how do you make sure that they're bringing top talent to the company? Well, um, obviously internal referrals help. Um, I also think we've spent a lot of time on our mission, our vision and our core values. Um, and they become a very focal piece of our recruiting um, because, you know, I have a sports background. My director of operations has a sports background. My, my sales manager has a sports background. So we've kind of likened this to building a championship team. And what we've realized is the more that we can paint the picture of everybody understanding the direction in which we're pushing, pushing and the role that everybody has pushing that direction, um, the more successful we are. So, but part of that is, you know, like we've got, you know, my office manager serves also as our HR manager and we put her through hiring for attitude. Um, and uh, I can't remember off the top of my head who runs that platform, but like it's a digital platform. It's like a four week course. We read the book on it. Um, we joined CCN, which is Certified Contractors Network. They have helped us um, evolve our processes, not only, you know, of how we're onboarding people, but how we're looking for people prior to them coming in. You know, we, we, we started doing some onboarding testing. Um, we have evolved our interview process for installers all the way up to managerial roles and sales roles, asking the questions and looking for particular answers. Um, you know, we tried to systemize it to the point where if I do the interview or Casey or Matt does the interview, like the scorecard winds up being the same because we're looking for 
you know, certain terms. We're looking for certain stories and ways that they tell what's going on in order um, to make sure, you know, part of hiring for attitude is when you're asking your questions is making sure that the people that are going through the interviews are giving you actual life experience, something they've experienced versus like, um, it's easy to answer hypothetically over things that you want. Um, and it's easy to, it's easy to hear things that you want to hear and hypothetical answers. So, um, we ask a lot of pointed questions about experiences they've had at other places. And, you know, I mean, it's taken a long time for us to evolve that. And honestly, it took getting burned a couple of times before we were like, you know what, this is the thing we need to figure out the most. I mean, people is the most. And we, and then we put everybody through training. We've got training for installation. We've got training for sales. We've got training for, for the operation side. Um, spent a lot of time and effort working on training too. That's awesome. It seems like you've had a lot of help kind of getting a lot of those things right. Um, and like you said, I, I like how you said it took a couple times, maybe getting burned to get over that hump and say, okay, we need to figure this out. Is there anyone that you've specifically learned from, or is there any one specific moment or person that you've learned from that has really helped you get over some of these humps? Um, something that comes to mind that you're able to talk about? So um, I'm a huge believer in mindset. Um, this is, this is kind of more the woo woo, like, you know, um, but, uh, Sean Fourier is, uh, I've been a part of his inner blueprint, um, classes for the last two years. In fact, I, my entire, I put my entire staff through it. Um, and we basically, you know, he's got a 12 week system module that you go over and kind of go through the things that make you think and, and, and do the things that you do and, and helps expand your belief in yourself and the things that you do. So I think Sean is a huge piece of that. Um, the certified contractors network and Charlie Gundell. Um, so I, let me rephrase that. Um, have you heard of the accelerate live event? It's Brian Kaskavalsian. Yeah, I believe um, so. Yeah. The, he's the wealthy contractor is the book that he put out. Um, so short story, uh, Holy City Gut Orcs was about $1.3 million, which on the surface, you know, upper level, that sounds pretty good for a gutter company. It's pretty big. Um, I, I thought, you know, on the surface level, we were doing great, but I was literally running the business in the ground on the back end um, because I didn't understand profitability. I didn't understand accounting. I didn't understand how the numbers of the business worked, especially when everything started to expand beyond a month, right? It's easy for you to sell a job on the you know, day one of the month and install it on month or on week three of the month and all your numbers align for the month. It's, you know, but when, when you have to pay for material before the job goes in and, you know, like accrual accounting is very difficult to understand. And I just didn't get it. Um, I sat through um, the business. I, I, the business was like a month from running out of bit out of money. And I went down to Brian Kaskavalsian's event uh, Accelerate Live in February of two years ago um, and stayed an extra day and listened to Charlie Gundell talk. Um, he's now a coach with CCN, but he owned um, a Renewal by Anderson Windows in California. Um, and I sat through his growth seminar was actually like a pro forma budget, you know, planning for the year. And he talked about all these things that I'd never heard of. And he makes the joke in that class that the first time he sat through it, he wanted to cut a hole in the carpet, climb under the carpet and crawl out of the room because he didn't think he was supposed to be in there. And I felt that viscerally while I was sitting in the room. I was like, oh, my gosh. Um, so that moment in that class single handedly transformed us from being, you know, from being a month from running out of business to clearing up almost $300,000 in debt in 12 months. Um, so it was, it, you know, it was a significant, it was a significant learning experience. It, it hasn't necessarily made all the problems of running a business go away. Um, but in terms of understanding the economics and, and the gears that turn a business, that was, that was very beneficial and CCN, as a platform where he is a coach has been largely beneficial in that too, because it has connected me to 40 to 50 other business owners that run into the same problems on, you know, on a weekly basis, similar, but different businesses, but you know, we all have the same problems. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. 
it seems like you've been able to gather a lot of not only gutter knowledge, but just general business knowledge, general service-based business knowledge that has been able to help you get over a lot of these humps and kind of take your business through the next level, which a lot of guys can't break through because they might be stuck in things like accounting and finance and they don't know how to get their numbers in line, things like that. Do you have- Or they're just ignoring them. <laughs> Very true. That's the other side of it too, is they just, you know, like, oh, well, I do my P&L like once a year. Well, that's <laughs> once a year. Uh, that's that's 12 times too little. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So do you have one piece or one maybe area of expertise that- you would recommend that at least every gutter business gets into whether they're doing 1.2, 1.3 million, or they're just getting started. It's just them and a machine. What's that one piece that you think they really need to get down no matter where they're at? Well, listen, I think all of us, you know, I, I personally am not necessarily motivated, motivated by money alone. Uh, my motivation is, is competition. I, I have this inherent need to be better than everyone else. But what I realized is, is no business can survive, no business can grow without understanding the economics of the business. And I think that what can you, where you can be fooled in the gutter industry, like anywhere in contracting, is you can rob Peter to pay Paul for years and not know it um, because you're selling jobs and installing jobs. And if you're not tracking buy the project where the dollars are going and also buy your business and buy your expenses where they're going. If you hit a bump in the road, you hit a snag in the road, suddenly you're in a situation where like the expenses just like mushroom cloud your business. And it's really hard if you do not understand how that works and where the visibility is you know for us we're to the point now where we can see a problem before it occurs because we're tracking our numbers so tightly and we understand where the money is going there was a period of time where like you know we were hemorrhaging cash and we didn't know where it was going and i mean and that was you know it's because we didn't have like checks and balances in place to keep you know, financing under control. And I think, you know, that's something I wish I learned when we first started and accounting was simple. Because if you understand that when it's simple, it remains a little bit more simple as the process goes and you can build, you can build the complexity into your system as, you know, as your business expands and the economics get a little bit more difficult. But, you know, just understanding that is, is I think the, uh, the most important part. Yeah, for sure. I think that's true just kind of across businesses in general, not just home services contracting, no matter if you're in e-commerce, if you're an agency like myself, kind of just knowing where your money is going every single month. And also, like you said, checks and balances, making sure that you're not just spending willy nilly because last week you checked and you had X dollars in the account. Well, that's been a week. It's It's been a while and you don't know what you have coming up next week. So how do you really know if you can afford this thing that you're about to buy? You know, making sure that you're not only looking at the here and the now, but where you were the past however long and where you're going in the past however long is huge. I think that's something that a lot of people don't get. Guys get so entranced by top line. You know, uh, everybody, and, and I think that is, you know, I, I think that is a huge key is, you know, I, I think I sometimes tell people like, oh, you know, like we're on pace for 2.3. Mind you, we're on pace for 2.3, but I scaled the business back to almost 700, like two years ago, we finished that year like $773,000. Last year we did 1.7, this year we did 1.3, but it's also because the moment I started to understand the economics and where everything was going, like we have a bottom line net 15 profit margin that we are looking for. We have a profit margin per job that we're looking for and we understand that. And if we fall outside of that, we lose money. Um, and I think that's where people get, you know, I used to tell everybody that, oh, we're in growth mode. So I was just burning money in a barrel thinking it was growing us bigger when I was literally just burning money in a barrel. It wasn't, you know, there wasn't any performance tied to it. There wasn't any growth tied to it. It just was, you know, I just was burning money to appease myself and tell myself we were growing. Um, so that was the transition from being a gutter guy to a business owner was, you know, understanding, I mean, even job costing, you know, I, I see contractors now that just don't understand from project to project 
what goes above the line and cost a good sold and then what goes into your in, into your gross profitability um you know I, 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 a lot of guys can get away with it but you know our th this is a small margin business and if you don't understand that like just a project or two can 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 wildly skew that one way or the other yeah for sure for sure especially when it's you know and a lot of these guys are it's seasonal right so you're you're thankful enough to be in a very you know nice warm area year round but you think those guys that are up in new york michigan that are very seasonal it's even harder right because you got to think well office rent is still due in december and january you know uh, taxes come up and that's a, that's a year-long thing and there's expenses that expand throughout the year that you know yeah you might be only open for nine ten months out of the year but you got 12 months worth of expenses coming through. So you got to make sure you're planning for that and have something in line. Cool thing is, is I'm actually going to be hosting. This is kind of a little tidbit. I'm hosting a podcast with a, a, an amazing guy from the industry that is going to talk specifically on accounting and keeping your finances in order. So that's, um, if you're listening to this, keep, keep in the lookout for that because that's something that I'm Great. super excited about. But yeah, there's this one book that I wanted to mention. I don't have it with me right now or else I would have pulled it out, but um, it's called Profit First. And oh, yeah. it's an amazing book that I was rec that it was recommended to me by an amazing mentor in the agency space. And it's an amazing book that I think anyone, no matter if you don't even have your first customer yet to, if you're at a $5 million company, I think everyone should read it because 100%. it's an amazing book that just gets in line that profit over revenue, right? Profitability is what you want to be dead eye focused on. Revenue mm -hmm. is a great number and it sounds nice when you tell it to your friends that you run a $2 million, $1 million company. But if your $1 million company is giving you back 100, 100 grand, maybe 80K a year, that's not something to brag about. So you want to make sure that you're you're focusing on your, your profit. And, and it's just an amazing book that has really helped me as well, kind of in my business. And obviously, uh, Rob here knows, knows about it. So I'm sure- Oh, yeah. I, I actually, I still- even to this day, despite the fact that I think that we have a much better grasp on our finances, I still run our bank accounting financing off of profit first because it'll tell me before any financial number comes out, it'll tell me if we have overshot or undershot something because if I have to pull in, you know, because every job that we sell, like, you know, so we do a 50% upfront, 50% after the job is completed. I put all the profit off first. And if I have to pull from that profit uh, for something else, it means that we have a percentage off somewhere and we've, we've messed our math up somewhere. So like, I mean, I, I love it because even understanding your P&L, that will tell you, you know, for me, that's like my primary indicator. If there's a problem, especially on the cash flow front, it starts there first. Great book. Profit First for Contractors is even is is the same book, but a little bit more specific to what we do as well. Yep. So bo both good resources. Yeah, an amazing book. And also they they have uh, if you know you're new to that whole that whole you know area of finance, they have people that actually help out. Mike McCallowitz has people that mm -hmm. are in his his group that help people kind of understand it and will walk you through it as well. And there's, I mean, like you said, there's profit first for contractors, there's different versions. You can get, there's free videos online that he explains it. I mean, it's an amazing resource for folks that mm -hmm. are new to that finance world or are looking for some way to really get their finances in order without having to go through a four year finance degree. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's an amazing, an amazing book. Any, any last words, any last pieces of advice for gutter guys that are out there that, might be struggling with some of the same things that you've struggled with and are looking to get to where you're at today? Yeah, I think a huge piece of what moved us from struggling gutter company to, to I mean, I, I want to call us thriving because we are, we are thriving. Things are going really well. We understand, you know, like we're making profit. Um, I think all of us are dealing with, with the labor side of it. Um, but uh, finding a regular group of other similar, maybe not competitive space entrepreneurs to have mastermind meetings with. I mean, at this point, I got a mastermind meeting with our gutter protection suppliers. I got one in our master, uh, the mindset group, Inner Blueprint with Sean Foyer. CCN does one. Um, 
I, I joined RGA, the Rain Gutter Association, um, that we do uh, masterminds in there. Like, find other people because you will fast forward through a lot of your business problems by having multiple people tell you, you know, nobody's going to turn around and say, Hey, this is how you solve the problem. But to have eight different people say, Hey, we solved it this way. Hey, we solved it this way. One of those will speak to you. And the thing is, is your business is going to evolve and the things that you weren't focusing on before will pop back up again at some point. And so having a continued source of people that you can hit to, to help answer questions, you know, marketing questions, um, you know, how to change your sales process, how to evolve your sales process, how to deal with your, your installation crews, how to grow that, how to deal with your trucks. You know, there are so many small things that we deal with inside it. There's so many moving pieces inside that you've got your big picture stuff. And then you've got your very small insular, you know, this is particular to my business or, you know, just particular to our business, like, you know, dealing with gutter machines. Um, we're the only ones that deal with that stuff, but you know, having other people that have solved that problem or or like maybe two steps ahead of you on it, you know, you can use those people to help y'all, you know, both y'all can solve that problem together. Um, and it's, you know, having mastermind groups is the most valuable thing I think I've gotten a part of in the last two years for sure. I would completely agree. I think that's true for any business niche. I mean, Absolutely. making sure that you have a solid group of people around you that can help you work through things, even if you're all in the same place. It's like you said, you can help work through it together. And I think, you know, humans are are social by nature, right? We we love to connect and we love to get to know other people as well. And so just it, entrepreneurship can be a lonely place, especially in construction and especially in the, you know, the- You can feel like you're on an island for sure. Exactly, exactly. And so making sure that you have people to help you out strategically, but also personally, Right. They don't always have to be your friends, but sometimes it's just nice to to chat with someone and say, hey, this I this was horrible today. I had this install go wrong. I mean, this guy didn't show up and, you know, the customer's two weeks late on payment and it's, I'm just having a rough day. And then the, it's just so much nicer to be able to talk with someone about that, that understands and knows what you're going through. So I would second that completely. Finding a group, if you haven't already, there's tons of them out there. He named a few that, you know, Rob's a part of, but making sure that you have a, a place where you can go, whether you're struggling or you're thriving is, is, is a huge resource for all entrepreneurs. I agree. Amen. Amazing, an amazing, an amazing resource. So as you guys know, you've been listening to the Gutterwise Marketing Podcast. I really loved having Robert on today. Some huge insights, really getting to know a lot of the business knowledge that should come along with, 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 um, running a gutter business, not only knowing how to do installs and not only having gutter knowledge, but also knowing how to run an effective business from all areas is very important. And I think all of Rob Rob's words have uh, have just echoed that extremely. So um, Rob, thank you so much for taking the time today. We really enjoyed having you here. Uh, if there's any way that, you know, uh, uh, maybe someone listening to this wants to reach out and ask some questions or uh, maybe they need help in something or, or want to get part of one of the groups that you're in, what would be the best way for someone to reach out to you? George, I, I appreciate the kind words. Um, the probably the best way to get a hold of me is my email is robert at holycitygutterworks.com. Um, if anyone forgets that, they can go to holycitygutterworks.com and, and click the contact button and it'll shoot it to info. That actually just emails everyone in the company, all the management staff in the company gets it. So, um, but if, you know, if anybody has questions, listen, I think, you know, our, our job as entrepreneurs, I think most entrepreneurs are like this. Um, you know, I'm giving, I even, even if it's a competitor in my market, like, you know, ultimately we compete against ourselves. We, we have to improve what we do against ourselves on a daily basis. Um, and I love, I love what I do. I love making people better if I can. That's part of the reason that I love what I do here is because, you know, we can change people's lives. I know that sounds like some, some cheesy mumbo jumbo, but I mean, it is a blessing to be able to have a platform to, to employ people and, and try and, and level up their lives. Um, and, and I, I do that across our mastermind groups too. If I can help somebody, um, even if it's just a matter of a pat on the back, tell them how, how, how great their business already is. And, you know, 
they should be happy with with where they are and just keep growing like man I, this is this is the part about owning a business that i love is that, you know i want to help i like to help whether it's a homeowner employees other business owners i just like to help that's awesome rob thank you so much for that and i'm sure all the people listening will appreciate it as well that's truly awesome thank you cool. well thank you for coming on today and uh, i hope to hope to keep in touch with you and maybe we can do an awesome episode in the future see what has to hold <laughs>